Morning and welcome to another video about whether electric cars are actually cheaper to run than their ICE equivalents. Now I know I've done a few of these in the past and I make no apologies for doing another one. The fact is that there are so many variables that, well, it's worth investigating them every time we come up with something new. People always say, yeah, but what if you try this car or this fuel or this way of financing it? It's just the possibilities are endless. Of course they are. So. I think it's only right that every time I have an experience that I think would benefit somebody, it's worth sharing with you. And I've had one of those experiences recently. I had a Toyota Igo to drive for a number of weeks. And well, what I want to do is explain to you what it costs me and how that compares to driving my Leaf. So grab yourself a coffee, make yourself comfortable, and let's talk about some of the benefits and the costs of ice over electric. This video is sponsored by Just EVs, a family run company with the largest selection of battery electric vehicles available with free UK delivery. They now also offer EV rentals. Have a look at justevs.co.uk and don't forget to mention EV Opinion for a free annual service. So before we get started, let me make it absolutely clear. I know that electric cars are not for everyone. And I'll probably say this again at the end because it really does depend on your personal circumstances, how you drive it, how far you drive. If you buy an electric car with your eyes shut and just expect it to work, expect it to fail because you really do need to research it. We really are at that stage still where unless you're prepared to spend tens and tens and tens of thousands of pounds to get an electric car that will go hundreds and hundreds of miles and cause you no issues whatsoever because you've got all the charging and everything else in place, uh, you're gonna be bitterly disappointed. So let's look at this with a, from a realistic standpoint and please accept these figures as my own personal figures, something that I've experienced that I can share with you. If you like them, take them away and use them. If you don't, ignore them and move on to the next video. Honestly, this is just me giving you the facts. I'm not here to tell you that electric cars are the right car for everyone. They happen to suit me, but take from this what you need. Enough about that. So this has come about because uh, somebody very kindly crashed into the back of my Nissan Leaf. It was in a car park and uh, they just reversed into it and we came back to find that that had happened. So it had to go into the body shop to get some repairs and they came, they dragged on a bit. It wasn't the best experience I have to say, but uh, while it was in the body shop getting repaired, they gave us a Toyota Igo to drive around in as a courtesy car. And well, we can talk about the Igo and I can tell you, it's all right, isn't it? It's a little car that you run around in. It's quite economical. But having come from an electric car, I have to say, uh, having to use gears again, having to put petrol in, uh, all those things were an absolute pain in the backside. So with all that said, let's get into the numbers. So the Toyota Igo, uh, I had it for a, a few weeks and I covered 600 miles in that time. Uh, I put 66 pounds of fuel into it to cover those 600 miles. And uh, as with all good courtesy cars, I gave it back with absolutely nothing in it. Um, so that cost me 11 pence per mile. Compare that to my Leaf now. So my Leaf is a 24 kilowatt hour battery and it actually usable is only 22. My home electric is 12.9 uh, pence per kilowatt hour. So that equates to, uh, I can do about 70 miles per charge. I can do more. I, I certainly, I quite regularly do 80, but I do have to be very, very careful. So 70 miles per, per charge is quite a realistic amount. So working out on that, a charge for me is two pounds and 84 pence. Now, if you take that 70 miles and work that out over how many charges that takes to do to, to get up to 600 miles, uh, that would cost me 24 pounds in electric to cover that amount. So when you compare that to the Toyota, that gives me a saving of 42 pounds every 600 miles. So that gives you an idea of just where the savings can be made and over a, a relatively small amount of mileage, just what you can save. So what I'd like to do now is actually look at that, let's stretch it out over a year. Now I do 12,000 miles a year. So 
If I was to do 12,000 miles a year in the iGo, working on the cost of what it's cost me at the moment to do that 600 miles, that would cost me 1,320 pounds. If I was to do 12,000 miles in my Leaf, based on the current cost of my electric at home, that would cost me 480 pounds. So, what's that gonna save? Well, quite simply, a saving over 12,000 miles of 840 pounds. So you can see, okay, it's not massive, but that's not to be sniffed at. 840 pounds is a decent amount of money. I personally keep my cars for an awful long time. So, I, in fact, I can't think of any cars, maybe one that I haven't kept for 10 years. My Leaf at the moment is uh, five years old nearly. I've done over 50,000 miles, 55,000 miles. The battery health is still really, really good on it. It's still got all the bars and um, I've got no concerns that that battery is gonna, isn't gonna last me for a full 10 years. So that argument that people will, will no doubt put in the comments now, are, yeah, but what about the cost of replacing your battery? Forget it, I don't care. It's not gonna cost me anything to replace that battery. The car will last me 10 years. So with that in mind, what will the saving be on fuel alone over a small economical car? Because I haven't done this before. I've only ever done it really with my two litre petrol 10 year old Mazda. Uh, so this is a much more, I think a much better, more modern test. But over 10 years, doing 12,000 miles a year, my saving would be 8,400 pounds. When you consider the cost of a brand new iGo, isn't much more than that. And what we haven't taken into account is the reduced cost of servicing. So the, the, the parts and the bits and pieces that go on around servicing an electric car are far less than they are in any petrol car. And then on top of that, just the driving experience. The, now I'm talking about a Leaf because I've got a Leaf, but I could have easily done this against a Zoe. I'd suggest that's probably a better size car to compare it against, but I've got to be honest with you, you can probably hear banging going on in the background. I'm having loads of building work done here at the moment and that is taking all my time up. So I didn't have a, the time to be able to sit down and work out what does a Zoe cost? What's it cost with a battery rental, without a battery rental? How does it all work out that way? It's better, I think, if I just draw my own personal experiences and give it to you straight that way. And then you can do as you please. So um, comparing it to that size car, the way it drives, just, the inconvenience of going to a petrol station, I was absolutely sick of it. Um, because I'm not used to doing it, one morning I was late taking the kids to school because I got in and it suddenly realized I need to stop and get petrol. Another day I was right on the last minute getting to work because again, I started driving to work and suddenly realized that I needed petrol. I know these are my own fault or my own problems, but I think what it does is it shows that how used, you, how used to driving an electric car you get when you've had one for a while and how you rely on just jumping in it on your driveway, uh, having it fully charged and driving off. That convenience, you can't really put a price on, I don't think, That's, that saves me time in my life. And then the actual driving experience. I haven't changed gear in a car for years and it is tiresome, especially in a car with a tiny little one liter, liter engine because I was constantly changing up and down gears. And if you drive a manual car at the moment, it probably doesn't bother you in the slightest. And you'll probably say, I prefer gears because I feel like I've got more control over the car. Please just drive a modern car. Even if it's a petrol or diesel car that's automatic, just drive one. You don't need gears anymore. They just get in the way. Uh, and then when I got back in my Leaf, not having to change gear, not having any noise of the engines, uh, that I go, it sounded like a wheezing old man. It was like, oh, oh, everywhere it went. It just, it, it was horrible. I, I get if you've got a V8 that you like the sound of an engine, I get that. But the vast majority of us don't. The vast majority of us drive cars like this that to be frank, the engines just sound horrible. I'd rather have that peace and quiet, that refined drive, no gear changes to be, even if it's an auto, just to feel that changing gears, none of that. It was a lovely, lovely place to be when I got back in my leaf. So when you take that whole thing as a package and realize that over 10 years, I could pretty much buy a brand new iGo in just the fuel savings. For me, that really does reinforce just how good electric is and how it fits into my life and how much money I am saving year on year. And that brings me back to the thing that I said right at the start, you don't have to agree with me. 
it could be that your set of circumstances are so wildly different from mine that actually it would cost you money to drive an electric car. Please do your own figures, please do your own working out. All I'm doing is sharing with you my findings of what I, I thought and what I can save comparing my Leaf to a very, very efficient modern petrol car. Uh, do with it as you please. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully that's given you a bit more information to help you make an informed decision of whether it's the right thing or not for you. Uh, please feel free to put some comments below. Let's, uh, as always, we'll discuss it. And if you've got any other questions or uh, any other comparisons you think probably worthwhile looking at, then let me know. And if, it, um, if enough people ask, then we'll make a video about it. And even if that video shows that electric cars aren't the way to go, I'm open to it. So let me know, uh, stick something below. If you have enjoyed it, remember to like and share. If you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel and um, get yourself a little mug, then have a look at the Patreon link and uh, we'll get one of those sent out to you. But until next time, thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. All the best.